Hello everybody, this is the Daydreamer with Daydreams and Nightmares. And it is time for the second part to my video uh, for the Minneapolis area uh, Fall Comic Con that I went to. Actually, I'm going to start off with this. I forgot to uh, show this off in the previous one. They've actually set the dates for the uh, Spring Con. Uh, the Minneapolis Comic Con 2018. This will be at the Grandstand uh, May 19th and May 20th. Uh, so that will be the new Spring Con for uh, Minneapolis area for next year. Looking forward to going to that as well. Now the big question is what is it that I managed to pick up while I was at the Comic Con? Um, my haul video. Uh, what I managed to do was also try to keep myself on a budget, uh, which is always the hard part. Um, I did have one plan in mind uh, when I went to this as well. I was, like I said, decided that I was only going to make about $50 in purchases, which for a con, um, with, it, it's kind of a tall order, I guess, if you're looking to get your uh, hands on some things there as well. But, um, I do have bills to pay, so, anyway, my primary goal at this particular one uh, is to um, chase after autographs, as I had stated before. Um, so I'm going to show off some ones that I managed to get. Um, the first one here, um, I do have a book that actually came from the uh, Nerd Block. Uh, this is Tobin Spirit Guide, uh, one of the artists that was involved in this uh, was uh, Eric Burn Burnham. Uh, he actually has signed the book on the inside here. It says, watch out for the fella on page 13, Eric Burnham right there. And, of course, the fella on page 13 is none other, let's see, than our favorite Ghostbusters, um, Green Monster, Slimer. But anyway, so, yep, yeah, I did get managed to get this signed here as well. Now... One of my concerns with my budget was whether or not I was going to need to worry about paying for autographs. Um, fortunately, I, uh, I I took five books with me and I picked up one additional item that I had autographed. So I got a total of six autographs. I had to pay for two. Um, and I'll show off what I have here. So th this one didn't cost me anything. Um, and the rest I'll show you as well. Uh, Steve Lo Le Aloha is the one who did the uh, art artwork inside uh, the, the book here. This is the uh, Douglas Adams Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, book one of three DC comics from, I believe it was in the early 90s. Um, but the cover itself was a collaboration with uh, Steve uh, Le Aloha and also uh, Steve Fastner, who was at the con as well. He signed that on the inside of the cover. I'm not going to pull that out uh, to show that. But I did manage to get an autograph from Steve Fastner as well for this particular issue. Um, Pat Broderick was charging for autographs. It was just five bucks for an autograph. Uh, <laughs> 
he had said that this is not one of his favorite covers. Um, it's one of those things that he says pops up that he's not very proud of. Not one of his best covers. I, I wouldn't necessarily not, not agree, but when I started going through a lot of the work that he has done, um, they're not in genres or in titles or stories that interest me now the incredible hulk i actually I, it's a it's a character and a, or a series of books that i really do enjoy so i did want to get something that i was interested in myself so yeah um he's done better work i agree with him <laughs> uh but this one had to get signed by him as well um but that was five dollars that i wound up spending uh, Dan Jurgens was there, and I decided to get this one here signed by him. Uh, this is Secret Six number three, Joker variant, done by Dan Jurgens. Um, I know he does a lot, has done a lot with Superman. I'm not a big Superman fan. Uh, I'm not. I don't have a lot of DC books that uh, that I could have brought as well but i am a batman joker fan so i thought this was a great one to and this is a great cover as well so i thought i'd get him to sign on off on this one and then last but not least um in my opinion anyway uh this is my favorite cover of the current run of regular series of uh dc bombshells aunt lucia uh was there uh signing um as well uh, I did manage to uh, get his autograph on Bombshells number 12 and also happened to also pick up a figure. Uh, this cost me $15, but I also did get an autograph on it as well. This is the DC Bombshells Wonder Woman with a uh, Aunt Lucia signature on this as well. Uh, I don't have the uh, Wonder Woman yet, but holding off because I was going to try to chase the chase on this one as well figured if I didn't get the chase I'd at least get the regular but so I wound up picking up this particular one there as well and it is signed by him um so I got that once again Aunt Lucia is the uh artist that does all of the DC bombshell books the regular series and then he's the one that also does all of the bombshell variant covers for other DC uh, books as well, which I, I, lo I love the style. So it was great to be able to be able to get both the comic book uh, signed and also to get a pop signed by him as well. So I got both of those. Um, so that brings me up to what, 20 bucks? Um, I'm also, um, well, how about if we double up the price as well? And I'm still trying to understand the concept behind why this is priced the way it is. And it's the nature of the beast that we are currently dealing with with variant covers right now as well. Uh, I have a near mint cover of the Seven to Eternity number one first printing, uh, but it's cover B. Um, I do have a second printing of cover A. I haven't been able to find a first printing of cover A. But having a first printing of cover B, I figure is just as good. When these came out, they were a, uh, as far as I knew, it was a 50-50. There was no restrictions. You could either order one or the other. Um, and I find it funny, though, that this is a $20 book and cover A is a $75 book. Uh, there's a $55 difference between the two covers. And maybe it's because it's just that the other one is more sought after. But I don't understand why it's the, like I said, it's the nature of the beast. Everybody wants the original cover. But like I said, when they made this, they made two covers. So this is the original cover as well. Because you had an option. But I don't get it. I don't understand how, how the uh, variant world is affecting pricing. But I'm happy to get a near mint first printing of number one of seven to eternity for 20 bucks uh got no complaints in that respect um let's see the other thing well, that brings me up to 40 dollars and with this this is going to put me over um and i may wind up showing this separately when i actually manage to uh 
put together my run of Old Man Logan. If you see my wish list for this year, uh, one of the things I still have not completed for this year, and that's one of the reasons I was looking for something like this, uh, there's a seller there that I like checking out, and I think I showed in the uh, spring uh, con that I went to, I got a uh, Michael Turner Fathom Super Pack, a bunch of comic books all together in one one pack. Um, and this, this particular shop does some really good uh, deals on doing um, packs of books. Um, I picked up a super pack for Old Man Logan for 15 bucks. Uh, the it includes the issues one through five of the uh, Old Man Logan, so that takes care of my wish list for that first run of books from 2015 one through five of Old Man Logan. I have a couple of them already, but um, I know a couple of them are variants as well, so this actually completes the one through five run for sure. And then I also have the uh, regular uh, issues. Uh, started up in 2016, 1, 2, and 3 included in this pack. So it is eight comic books that I got for 15 bucks. Uh, Old Man Logan, 1 through 5, and re uh, the regular uh, recurring uh, issues of 1, 2, and 3. So eight comic books, Old Man Logan. That takes care of the uh, uh, books that I was looking for. I'm going to get these bagged and bored and maybe I'll show them off separately uh, in another video as well. But that was another pickup. For another 15 which puts me at 55 so I'm already five dollars over my budget so I told myself I couldn't really get much anymore I saw this artist though that had some books uh, or some prints and he does work that caters to two of my top fandoms um, in the comic book world my top books that I look for my the things that got me into collecting one of my favorite characters in the uh, comic book world is uh, Sandman Sandman uh, volume 2 with the endless um, and he had a print for uh, death actually here's a catch he actually has he has he has done prints for all of the endless um, and um, he had a complete set of, I think it was nine different prints. There's seven endless, but there was a couple additional, like two or three prints that were included in that as well, um, of characters, including Dream and, and Death, um, that I was looking at getting. I asked him for the Death print, um, and he was selling that for, uh, ten bucks, um, but he didn't have any available. Um, and that was actually before I picked up the old man Logan. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't have busted my budget doing that. But I went, uh, he didn't have it available. What I would, did go back over, his, by the way, his name is uh, Eric Lerwald. Um He's the artist. And the other set of characters that he had on display that caught my eye were all of the doctors. He did, does Doctor Who art as well. Uh, and he had all the doctors as well. Uh, so that's why it caught my eye. Between the Sandman uh, prints and the Doctor Who prints, you're going to get my attention. Um, and he does some really good work, and I liked what I saw. He was doing an offer. Um, it was gambling. <laughs> uh, roll the dice. Uh, he, if if uh, you give him $2, because $1, you kind of had uh, a chance to maybe win something, not win, maybe win something. For two bucks, you roll the dice, you were guaranteed to win something. Um, what I wound up winning is what was ba his basic uh, bargain bin, $5 prints. Um, but for two bucks, I got a $5 print. So in the end, I just paid $2. So that puts me up to uh, $57. So I only went $7 over. I'm going to move the uh, camera back just a little bit so I can get the print in the frame here. Uh, the one print that I did get, and I, I got his information so I can follow up and maybe get my hands on some of those endless and other Doctor Who prints from him as well. But this is what I got here. This is... The fourth doctor. 
Uh, it is marker and watercolor um, of Tom Baker, the fourth doctor. I, I said this is I, I really this is one of the ones that caught my eye as well as the death that really caught my eye. But this is something that I wanted to pick up as well. So I managed to pick up a figure, an art print, and comic books. Got some autographs. So I had a pretty good time. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed my haul from the Minneapolis, St. Paul, uh, Minnesota Comic Book Association Fall Con. Um, if you enjoyed the video, like the, uh, the print that I just showed you, the uh, Wonder Woman Aunt Lucia signed pop or the uh, comic books that I managed to pick up as well. Hit like, subscribe if you want to watch more. Feel free to leave any feedback or comments down below. And thank you for watching.